Hello, I'm Ryan, and today I'll be showing you the GitHub Action CI/CD bot for SQL Mesh. We've recently reworked this bot based on feedback we got from customers using it in production. The reworks are mainly focused around making the bot a bit more flexible to adapt to the different use cases people have, while also maintaining the same great core features it had before. So it, throughout the demo, you're going to see two new features being used. One is auto categorization behavior, and the other is automatic backfill configuration. With these changes, you can actually have the bot automatically detect when a change is in a PR, categorize that change as breaking or non-breaking using SQL Mesh's column level lineage, and then automatically backfill tables that were affected based on a date range you provide, like the last day, the last week, the last month, to give you something you could preview and validate before you actually backfill the whole thing and go to production. But for the demo today, I'm going to be focusing on two different workflows that the bot now supports. One which is synchronized and one is desynchronized deployments. So a desynchronized deployment is the common pattern you see today. This is where I want to make a change. I create a branch in my GitHub repo and I preview that change in some development environment. Or using what I just described, the bot can create that change in a PR environment. So I may validate that change, and then in order to go to production, I merge my branch to main. Now, what happened here is the code, the main branch of your code, now represents that change. But production, your data warehouse, is still reflecting the old state. So what happens next is the follow-up script kicks off and kicks off a deployment to then rebuild the tables to now reflect that change. The amount of time, so what, well, the time we're in right now is what I consider desynchronized. The code says it's one thing, but the data says something else. And we don't reach synchronization until that new script that's gonna backfill and deploy the new tables in production finishes. And that's even the optimistic case because there's also a case where that script fails. And we actually may never realize the state where those two are synced for this particular version. Right, and so what this means in companies is that you never really know when by just looking at a repo, what the data represents. You know what the code tells you, but what's really out there in the data, you don't really know unless you go into logs or something to figure out what the status is of your different backfill jobs. So SQL Mesh now supports this behavior and we'll demo it here in a minute. You'll see how this could be used and this is a common pattern used today. But the SQL Mesh architecture also supports a different pattern called a synchronous deployment. And very similar to the last one at the beginning, I create a branch, it's my development environment, I have my change, but instead of me merging myself my branch into from my branch to main, we instead issue a command or take some signal, which we'll talk about in a minute, to tell SQL Mesh we want this change in production. And what the SQL, the GitHub CI CD bot will do is automatically backfill, be sure there's no gaps between what's currently in production and the change you made, and then deploy that change to production and merge the code into main. Essentially, these two operations, the actual deployment to the production using uh, SQL Mesh's virtual update and the merge to main happen within seconds of each other. And as a company, what this means is now when I go and look at my main branch, that actually reflects what the data says is out there. They are now synchronized. So the GitHub bot has been updated to support both patterns and we'll look at both of them today. So here you can see I'm making a PR. And in this example, I'm just changing a filter on a query. Uh, I'm making it, uh, instead of filtering out at zero dollars, it's one dollar. And this would be a breaking change, which we'll see later in the plan. Now, right away, if we come back here, you'll see that the SQL, the, the workflow starts and it sets these check statuses for us here on our PR. So you can always check a high level status of the bot by looking at the, uh, the root level of your PR, the main tab of your PR. And here you can see that our test, our unit test passed and now we're doing our uh, PR environment, we're creating the PR environment and getting our prod preview plan created. Now you could click on the checks tab, which brings you over and you could see the details behind these things. And so here it tells us that it's gonna be making this uh, environment uh, Worsthall 49, which is based on my repo name. The re repo name is called Worsthall. And then as the bot moves along, it posts high level uh, important information at the as a comment in the PR itself. 
So the bot is telling us that it's now made this PR environment worst hall 49. And you can also see at the bottom there that the check mark has been done on PR environment synced. Now, if we go back to our check tab, you can see these full details. You could see that the PR environment was created. You could see what dates have been loaded. So we configured the bot to load one date yesterday in this case. So that'd be the second at the time. And it also tells you the type of change that occurred. So we have a breaking, and then that breaking change had a child that was indirect breaking. So this gives the reviewer who comes into the PR, you could easily see the code that changed. And then when you want to go to the environment itself to then validate the data, you can see exactly what has been changed, what types of change, and what I would be able to see from a data perspective in that environment. Now, as we continue, you can also see that it generates a prod plan preview. So this is a look at what the prod plan would be if we deployed to prod at this moment. So you can see at the bottom, we had uh, these missing dates. It tells you what it has to backfill and it tells you the code changes that exist. Now, since we're doing the desynchronized flow, I'm gonna merge this PR right now. And that will then kick off the deploy to prod. So we're gonna see the code go into main, but then eventually see the data represented in production. So I go ahead and merge that PR. Now for GitHub has been configured then to do that deploy to prod, which you can go click on this checks tab and you can see this new workflow get kicked off. And now what's cool about this is the bots actually, as it goes to deploy to prod, it's going to update the PR that, tri that triggered that deployment. And it's gonna update its status over there. So here you can see it's saying we're deploying to prod. And you can see that we have this prod plan generated. This is what it's going to actually put into prod and uh when it went when it ran its plan so this is what was actually deployed to prod itself and then if you go back to the conversation tab you'll see that exact plan posted there too so this creates a nice audit log so in the future if you want to come back to the pr and you're wondering hey when we merged this what was the you know what were the changes we actually applied to prod you can easily find it here Okay, so that was the desynchronized flow. Now I'm gonna jump over to one of the synchronized flow, which will do the uh, deploy command. So you can see here, exact same start. I make a PR. This time I made a different change. I added a new column. Not too important what the change is. But then here you could see that we have all these different statuses. But now we see a new status. We're actually gonna see two new statuses. Uh, oh no, never mind. One new status, which is this prod environment synced. So we didn't see that before because we're using the desynchronized flow. But now we're telling SQL Mesh we want it to synchronize prod eventually. And we're going to give it a command to tell it when it should do that. So you can see the beginning here, very similar to before. It's going to post these comments to the PR, run these different checks. But now you can see here, prod environment skipped, prod environment synced was skipped. We did not do that yet. That's because we haven't sent the deploy command, which we'll see in a little bit. But we want to jump over, we'll check these checks, and you can see this is just like before. You can see the different things, uh, status on these different things. You can see this was non-breaking. We loaded that date. But uh, you can see over here, we have that prod environment skipped because we didn't get the deploy command. So now let's jump ahead and let's go ahead and trigger that deploy. And so it's, we're going to move back here. And now all I'm going to do is go into the comment section and write a comment here, which is deploy. What you're gonna see me do now. And you could see after doing that, we're gonna go back to the check tab and we are gonna kick off a new workflow. Uh, the bot's gonna pick up and now refresh all these different statuses. So it saw that that command came through and it needs to try to deploy to prod like we asked it to. And so you can see these start filling up. You can see the plan that it's going to be deploying to prod, which is shown there. And then you can see it's deploying to prod. And it actually posts the plan that it's that's gonna deploy right now back in the comment and the PR, just like we saw before. But now instead of before where we merged and then saw the plan come back later, you know, that was eventually deployed. Now we're seeing the prod plan before we actually do the merge right here. And then yet again, this provides, provides a nice audit trail. So you can see exactly how we got to production for a given change. And you can see that sync in the deploy is happening. It's backfilling those missing dates that we had compared to what we had in development. And now you can see it went green. 
here's the prod plan that you actually used to deploy exactly what we saw back as a comment on the PR. And it was, I know it was really quick there, but you could see at the top, this thing went green and then the merge at the top came in. So we just deployed the data and now the code just went into main. A few second gap there. And that's how we're able to keep those synchronized. And you can see that the bot there at the bottom did the merging there itself, not a human because we ran the deploy command. Now one alternative, instead of the deploy command, you could also use this required approvers flow. This is where you set up people in your organization that should be required for approval to use as a signal that we want to go to prod. So once their approval comes in, the bot says, okay, it's time to go to production and it will do that deploy. So here, similar as before, one new status though that we're going to see here is this required has required approval. So here you can see has required approval did not come through. No one's approved this PR yet. So we skip the production environment sync. So that's the one new change supporting this workflow. And when you come over here, same stuff you've seen before, you can see the environment summary. But the one change, we have that required approvers, right? So you can click on that and you'll see the list of possible approvers is SQL Mesh. So in this case, the username, this is for demoing purposes, I have a SQL Mesh user account that I created. And so it's saying this user is SQL Mesh. But if this was like for real, like if I was one of them, it would say Eekman RQ, that's my GitHub name. It would show it that show it there. So it's saying that we're waiting for a SQL mesh person to give the approval. And so now I'm just going to quickly, and oh, and it also is telling us that we didn't deploy to prod because we didn't get that approval in. So now I'm just going to drag this over. This is me logged in as that SQL mesh user. I'm going to come over here and give the approval. So approve. She saw it come through there. And then Let's see here. And then now that the approval came through, we go back to checks and you could see the workflow got kicked off. And we're going to see these statuses start to update, just like when we did the deploy command. Now it's showing us as these statuses come through, uh, we're seeing these get updated as it tries to deploy to prod. And just like with the deploy command, we're going to see it post back a comment on the PR and we'll be able to see the PR plan that was actually deployed here. So here's the plan that it actually deployed. And we come back over here. You can see it merged. And yet again, just to show that synchronization flow. So we, we went green here. And then now we're going to see it merge just shortly after, right? Getting that data and code and sync. Go back to conversation. And you can see the prod uh, plan there. And you can see the bot merged after we got the approval. All right, that is it for the high level overview of the changes we recently made to the GitHub Action CI CD bot. You can head over to the documentation to get full details on these changes and how to configure the bot and the full detailed configuration options, which you could see here on the different ways that the bot can be deployed. If this is your first time seeing SQL Mesh, we have an excellent getting started guides for the CLI, notebook, or the browser UI. So you can find the interface that works best for you and get started and see what SQL Mesh is all about. Also, if you're new too, you could join our Slack community, over 1,000 people strong. You could introduce yourself and also Go ahead and get, provide any feedback on this or anything else in SQL Mesh or ask any questions you may have. We're always uh, happy to answer those. All right, thank you for your time. Hope to see you over there. Thanks.